So it has been 10 months since we've lived in our R pod. And here is a tour of what it's like after 10 months of living full time in it. So the first thing is the stairs. So I don't love the stairs. I'm going to be honest about it. They bounce. You can get these like stabilizers for it. You can get other stairs. The other thing is we lost a couple screws. So we have zip ties holding them in right now. Seems to work, but that's some warranty thing that we're going to have to deal with. But thankfully there's not a lot of issues that we've had. Um, so coming in, this is our little shoe box here and it also has a broom in it, more shoes, lots of shoes. Um, we have this chenille rug and what's great about it is it can go in the washing machine. So, um, we just kind of wash it at laundromats when we need to. So stepping in, I've got the bed down right now. Um, I will also film it with the bed up so you can see the magic of television will make it probably appear like right here. And now the bed is up. So this is the jackknife sofa in the sofa position. Underneath there's two cargo nets. That's a big storage area. You get into it through the sofa. Before I start, I fold the blankets in on both sides and the end. This is just because we have a thicker mattress. First I grab the mattress, fold it up. Then I grab the bed, fold it up. Um, the latch was kind of off base. That was a user error more than a trailer error. R2020 has a simple patio latch. The newer R pods I know have better latches. And you may want to install a second one on the other side just for a little bit more security. Okay, but anyway, <laughs> so the bed is down right now. We actually uh, swapped out our factory mattress for a much nicer mattress. So we have an eight inch full queen Zenith green tea memory foam mattress. So I've pulled up the blanket so you can see, but it's like, it's really nice. It's, you know, the memory foam and um, it definitely, after about six months, we're like, we cannot sleep on the factory mattress with just the three inch topper. So we went ahead and purchased this one. Definitely a very smart decision on our part. So I'm gonna start over here at the bedroom area. Um, we put this nice map of our journey up here. And this is my husband's side of the closet. So up on top, he keeps like his drone, his wallet, things like that. He put shelves in there and he still kind of has those in there. I'll put a link to what he used in the um, description below. Then he's got a whole mess of like cords over here. I don't know what's going on over here. Um, these polar fans are O-polar fans. They are USB. They've come in so handy when we have been in um, boondocking situations where we can't have the air on. So come back to our little cubby corner. He keeps, I don't know what's back there, a belt. Um, we definitely have these moisture eliminators all throughout the RV. Um, we spent a lot of time in the South and it's been very humid and we're back in North Carolina now and it's very humid, so they're everywhere. Um, he also seems to have sweatshirts and sweaters back there, okay? On my side, um, it's a little different. So I have like my bedtime stuff, my lotions, my glasses, uh, some pillow spray. And then down below is kind of my catch-all box. I have like a lot of books down there and um, just like random stuff that I don't know what else to do with. And I do love our big window back here. Um, it is bright in the morning a lot of times, so I sleep with a sleep mask, but um, it's really fun at night or if it's raining to watch the rain or like see the stars through it. And we haven't had any issues with it. Obviously, I know some R pods have had issues where like they break or whatnot on the road, but we've been on the road for 10 months and over 16,000 miles and have had any issues. All right, my side. So I put my purse up top usually um, and my sunglasses and things like that. Then in my side, I still go the route of hangers. <laughs> um, I don't have a lot of clothes in here right now because you'll see our laundry bin in a minute. And then I just roll a couple like dresses and things down below. This has worked out fine for me. I also, when we were in a colder climate, I swapped out some clothes that I had in a, in a um, bin in the truck that's like a waterproof bin. So I don't keep all of my clothes in here at once, but this has been fine for me. Um, so my side here, I'm gonna try to get in here as best I can. So this nightstand, that's also where the water pump is behind me. So I have these little baskets, I have two of them where I keep um, some clothes and then below it is nothing because there is a water pump under there. Now on my husband's side, we've got 
he also has the baskets where he keeps like his underwear and socks but under here there was nothing so we took that out and now that's where we keep tools like extra fuses um, bungee cords and things like that I got these hooks for us so I put my uh, sleep mask on mine my husband puts his headphones on his but um, my side too I did have to swap out the factory USB um, outlet mine didn't work so we got one from e-trailer it now works and I have my fan on my side too this is the emergency window side right here oh there's a person next to me and then we've got some decor um, we picked up the sign in a random place I don't even remember where and then some photos of us along our travels okay so coming around here to our kitchen area I'm gonna go up to the cupboard first so you'll notice we have bungees everywhere um, that is because we shut everything when we drive we learned on our first trip that um, one of our cupboards open and since then we definitely secure it we also secure the paper towel um, just by putting a bungee around it but I'll come up to this cupboard first honestly it's a little messy right now but we have our um, paper plates which are compostable we have our uh, like Corel Wear, whatever it's called. Hasn't broken, been really nice actually. And then we keep um, silverware in these. This is like our, the forks, knives, and spoons that are, um, are plastic, even though I hate plastic fork, knives, and spoons, but um, someone gave us a bunch of them, so we have them. And then we've just got like our Tupperware up top and uh, you know mixing bowls and then all of our knives and scissors and like our spatulas and stuff are actually in these racks. These are salt, I think they're salt something racks. I'll put a link below. But um, they've been kind of really nice to help us organize a little bit and get more room out of the cupboard. All right, coming back below. So this is another modification that we did on our sink. So first I'm gonna take the sink cover off, which also can double as a cutting board. We usually just put it, oh, it's dripping, but we usually just put it right there when we're not using it. Um, so this is a different sprayer than what came with the R-Pod and it has three settings. And I think we paid like $12 for this on Amazon. It has been a total game changer, especially when washing dishes. And our sink seals, we're actually getting them replaced because they got grime under it. Um, a lot of you know campgrounds, they don't, they might have well water. They might not have water that's purified. And even though we have a filter, it doesn't necessarily take everything out. So um, definitely have to get those seals replaced soon. This is also where we put our MiFi's. Um, however, when we're washing dishes, we like just set them on the bed so they don't get wet. But this seems to be a really good spot. And our Verizon one actually has a has an antenna in there to get a little bit better of a signal. We rarely open these blinds and it's because they snap in at the bottom here and we just never unsnap them. But if you don't snap them in, they're kind of all over the place when you're driving. Okay, for our sensors. So this is um, on the RPOD 192. The sensors are kind of near the sink here on the side. And our sensors are sometimes right, maybe, sometimes, I don't know, probably never. Um, so a lot of times we figure out if our gray is full, it's because it's coming up in the shower on us, or if our black is full, it's because we can see it when flushing. But, um, you know, if you were like diligent and clean your sensors, maybe it would work for you. So a couple things about the water pump and the heat. So you don't need to turn the water pump on if you're on city water. If you're using your fresh tank, you have to use the water pump to pump it from your tank. But um, your hot water heater, Right now we're on electric, we're on shore power. So we turned it on the electric setting in the back, or if we were on our propane, we would turn it off and be on the propane setting. So I'll show you that when we go outside. This white contraption here is actually just a Wi-Fi extender. It's a Netgear, um, it was probably like $40. It's great, it helps if you have campground Wi-Fi, it helps bring the signal closer to your RV. And it definitely gives you like maybe two more bars and has been a lifesaver when our cell hasn't worked that well and we've needed to use campground Wi-Fi. So this is the um, thermostat and it's Dometic. And so I'm gonna turn the air conditioner on. Now with air conditioner, you want it to be on auto. You don't want it to be on heat or cool. You actually want it on auto. 
and then if you hit mode again it'll show you what the temperature is it'll say auto cool um, you can kind of like play with the up and down make it 67 68 whatever you want the temperature to be but then um, it kicks on so here's the air conditioner it's running um, it is a little loud I mean sometimes at night you can't really hear the TV very well so we actually use the speakers when we're listening to TV but um, it works really well and it has a couple different air vents so you can kind of focus the air it has this one in the middle and um, it keeps the RV very cool so back to the kitchen this is our trash can and it just hooks over the counter it can go in when you're not using it can go partially out or it can be pulled all the way out which is usually how we end up using it when we're using it for trash all right behind this cover get ready for a mess all right this is a really authentic just <laughs> what we do um, if I have the time I end up organizing things really like nicely and pretty but then we take a pan out we take another pan out and whatever one day I plan to take a video when this is like all in here nicely, but let's be real, this is like real life on the road. So we've got our Instant Pot in here, um, our coffee press, we've got a water kettle, um, silverware, our strainer, we've got some brewmate cups. Down below, lots of pots and pans. We have three different cast irons. We have two nonstick pans. Um, we have our dish strainer down there. Like, I think there's a cutting board. I don't know what else is down there, but lots of stuff down there. And one day we'll be organized. So our microwave slash convection oven, we actually use it as a convection oven way more than I ever thought. Um, it's great for like making chicken dinners or things like that. But obviously we use it as a microwave on shore power, like all the time. Underneath the microwave, that is the like safety alert. It has um, a sensor for like CO2 or for, I don't know, propane or whatever else. Fun fact, if your battery goes low, it will start beeping. And for some reason that always happens at like four o'clock in the morning, whenever it happens to us. So yeah, fun fact. Coming back up to the counter here. So another modification we did was this peel and stick backsplash. Got it at Home Depot, really inexpensive. Um, holds up great for 10 months in like really humid places too without any issue. So our stove here, and we actually keep a just thin cutting board in here when we travel. Our stove here is a two burner gas and um, we've melted our little knobs because if you put a cast iron um, pan with the handle over the knob, it will in fact melt. Also, this is totally not clean right now. So yeah, there's that. Um, it's not super easy to clean, not surprising, but Barkeeper's Friend is my favorite thing to clean the sink and actually most of the RV, but the sink and the stove are like, get very clean with Barkeeper's Friend. All right, so behind here, that's where we keep all of our aim and flames and we have like a million because that's how you light your stove or fires or whatever else. Um, there is a fan up here too. So if you're cooking, it's always a good idea to have the fan on. We usually put this fan on and the bathroom fan when we're cooking in the kitchen. All right, so we do have this thermometer here. Um, this is like the only metal that actually is magnetized here in the RV. So um, that shows us the temperature and the humidity levels in here. And then coming back up, we've got our cute little Country Roads Take Me Home sign. Um, we do have a tiny issue with trim. It has come off a few times. We actually got it fixed when we were in Oregon at an RV dealership and it's just popping off again. So just not a huge deal, but not ideal. I'm gonna turn this light on for a little more light. All right, that's our cutesy little mountain uh, wood laser etched or whatever they call it sign, but I thought it was like perfect there. So our fridge and freezer. Um, we got a new handle. It took us four months to get it, but we got it. It was super easy to install. Um, I did it myself in just like five minutes. So I have no clue what our freezer looks like, but let's find out. Okay, well, sort of organized, not really. Um, it's huge though. And so we've been living in here for 10 months without an issue and tons of room. Definitely needs to be defrosted right now. So we usually do that every two months or so, um, literally by just taking a hair dryer and doing it. Up here, so the Dometic refrigerator and freezer combo in the 192 is a two-way, which means it works on shore power or propane. It does not work on um, battery. That also means it doesn't work on solar. 
unless somehow you like had a crazy solar package that you like somehow rewired and I don't know I guess there's like one person that has done this but, but for the most part yours does not work on anything except for propane or shore power if you're on auto like we are right now you can see it's on auto um, your it will like decide if it you know if it's electric and the electric goes out propane will be a backup if you press this and it's out, that means it's only working on propane. If you press this button and it's off, that means it's not working at all. So you wanna make sure it's on. Auto is ideal. Um, sometimes like when our GFI blows and it, if we're out of gas, which has only happened once, it'll make a nice beeping sound for you because it can't use electric or can't use gas. But for the most part, auto seems to work really well for us. All right, y'all, get ready for this mess. <laughs> um, this is our refrigerator. It is messy right now, but it is what it is. Um, we like condiments. There's a lot of room for condiments in here. Oh, and there goes the fridge, which is something funny. Did you see how that did that? That is why we have a dented handle there because when our refrigerator door was broken, when our plastic handle here had fallen off, we had just duct taped it and then it flew open one day while we were driving and hit behind it. But I'll fix now. Um, one thing you want to make sure is when you're shutting the refrigerator, you want to hear that click. So these little levers click there. Same thing with the freezer. Then you know it's closed, which also leaves a lot of knuckle prints right here, but whatever, it's closed. So um, underneath the refrigerator, is the central vac, the intravac, and you can also get a banded hose. So we have a hose for it. Um, I highly suggest it, especially if you're going to sandy areas to get the sand out. So the hose connects right here, and then you would just turn on the on or off. Um, also, if you don't have a hose, you just wanna sweep things to it. Just lift up that kick plate with your toe and you can sweep things to it. The bag is back here. It is a Y11 bag. It's very easy to change out. Um, you can buy them in three or four packs, I think, and we just bought ours on Amazon. Below the fridge here is your breaker box, and ooh, ours is dirty, but this is where your fuses and breakers are on. Everything's labeled. It's pretty easy, so if you blow a fuse, you can just swap it out. Um, we just bought a whole bunch of fuses from Amazon because we've blown a, a couple. We keep blowing the um, number five, which is the GFI in the refrigerator. I'm thinking because our GFI is bad, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, this is where it is. And this is your heater. So um, heater works really well in here. Actually, sometimes too well. We would get so hot on um, even like 30 degree nights. It would be so hot in here just at 65 degrees. So that's great that it works well. Um, and also our dog who is currently in his favorite little spot over here loves to sleep here opposite the heater so he can stay nice and warm. So this is our pantry. We had the shelves fixed in October in Oregon because they all kind of sank. <laughs> um, we still are pretty careful of what we put on them. We don't want to put anything too heavy, but this is kind of our weird organization that we understand. Um, this is all of our spices in this blue thing. And up here is kind of like our chips and stuff, but we've managed to make the shelves not sag again, which is great. And um, we put all of our heavier food items down below the seats. And there is a mirror on the front of this pantry, which is if you open it up in the bathroom, now you kind of have a mirror in the bathroom, but um, we just put a mirror over the sink and pretty much use that. Although I do use this um, big mirror sometimes. If you open it up, you get really great light from the bathroom. So coming into the bathroom. So the first thing about the bathroom is this door. Actually, it's magnetic right there. So it kind of clicks closed. And when you are traveling, the door has a snap and a little belt or whatever you want to call it here. Um, definitely put that on. I've seen a lot of people that have had issues when they're driving and, you know, their door breaks. All right, so the shower. The shower is actually quite big on the 192. Um, first, we have laundry in it. That's where we keep our laundry when we're not showering. When we are showering, we put it on the floor in the bathroom. So this is the lip here. It's like, I forget the length. I'll put it in the description below, but 
it is high enough that it, we don't get the bathroom wet. You can see it has a big skylight in here for a little bit more extra room. Um, we have a little bit of a problem right now. So normally our shampoos and conditioners are in a uh, command shelf, but it fell just the other day. We were in Mississippi. I think it was just way too hot for it. And um, then I went to go fix it and noticed that when it fell, one of the little plastic pieces broke off. So I just need to get a new shelf and I haven't done it. But we do have the soap dish and we have the like razor holder, which we have razors and also a nail brush because when you're camping, that's so important. And then you've got the hot water, cold water valves. Um, we, I'll tell you about this in a second, but we just put two hooks in here so we have extra towel room. And we did have to, and we did have to reinstall this because um, it fell off one day. And so we put like wood putty, I think my husband put behind it and then silicone over it and we haven't had a problem since. So earlier I was talking about um, like keeping moisture out. We love these hanging bags. Um, it's funny because it says that like these are good for 60 days. Uh, they're good for like three weeks tops if you're in the south. So one thing I do want to point out is our shower curtain is gross. We are going to get a new one. I used to clean it. It's like it's just lime buildup and calcium and all that type of stuff from well water mostly. But um, at this point, I'm not even trying to clean it anymore. It used to I used to use like a uh, barkeeper's friend a little bit would work. And then when it got even worse, I was using something specifically for lime. But at this point, I just need to replace it. So our bathroom sink. I don't like the faucet. I'm going to swap it out after we get all of our warranty work done to a um, taller, better faucet that also doesn't have two handles, but that will be in the future. Full sink here. Um, it's not very big. It's big enough to wash your hands. I mean, we brush our teeth, wash, us, wash our face here and things like that, but it is pretty small. Then underneath, there's a lot of storage. So this is where we keep like our cleaning supplies and our happy camper, which is like our favorite for cleaning out our toilet. Um, Clorox wipes, our barkeeper's friend, like I keep talking about, um, you know, even bug sprays under here, hand sanitizer, things like that. So um, this is kind of like where we hide all of our cleaning supplies. But we also, um, under here, there is like a little hole that you have to be careful of, which I don't even know if I can get to. It's back where the drain is, so you don't wanna put anything small back there because it'll fall through. And in the bathroom, we have another one of these Chanel rugs that you can just quickly throw into the laundry. Um, we have a heater, an electric heater. It's mostly because we wanted to save money on um, propane. And if we're paying for shore power, why not use the heater? So we have a um, Vornado Tempa, which is the children's one. So if it falls over, it turns off. And I'm sure there's a lot of brands that do that. But we also have a dehumidifier in here. Um, this is so key for this moisture, especially, you know, like I keep saying in the South, but if you're on shore power, like they're like $20 and a great investment. Um, on the other side of the toilet here, we keep a one gallon jug. That is so we keep water in it. So if we're traveling and we don't have water in our toilet, we need to go to the bathroom, we can use it. Or when we're boondocking, we tend to flush with that to try to save water for showers. And behind that is our trusty broom. And I think there's also, yes, there is a absorber, absorbent, whatever the word is. Um, so, you know, getting all that moisture out. Okay, above the sink. So this is like command hook central. Um, these are command shelves. So this top one here is where, like, it's all mine. Let's be real, most of this stuff is mine. My husband um, is able to keep like one tiny dop kit. So I, to keep this in place, I actually put a rubber band around it so when we're driving on the road, it doesn't seem to budge. Uh, it has fallen down a few times before I started doing that. But I've got a lot of stuff in there. That's kind of like my everyday stuff. So it's quite large. I'm a big fan. Then we also put these cups in front. And again, I have the entire left one and we share the right one for our toothbrushes. And then this little cute air plant that we grabbed um, and it's still alive. And the mirror is just a cheapy Amazon mirror with uh, Velcro strips. So I'll put a link to that below as well. So here's a funny issue. Our um, window kind of broke, or the, I guess the shade broke. The string on it broke, and it's probably because it was our most used window. 
we can kind of prop it open with these clips and so we definitely do that sometimes but um, for now it is just down so over here on our pantry bathroom cabinet whatever you want to call it we have um, another bungee cord surprise surprise because we lock that <laughs> Um, so we've got these little towel hooks here, another place to have towels dry. I love these aqueous towels because they're so, they just dry so quick and they have a hair towel too, which like cuts your hair drying time in half too. I'll put links below. Another, uh, towel clip over there, our toilet paper roll. Oh, with new toilet paper. Um, it's a 3M stick on. It can go up and down or side to side if you'd like. And we actually use bamboo toilet paper, which we haven't had any issues with with our septic tank. Coming back up here, so we have these two bins. Um, in one is our extra towels. The other one is kind of, right now it's like a catch-all uh, because we're about to take our RV in and it's just kind of stuff we don't know what to do with. But it used to be um, like our hiking equipment used to be in there and like our backpacks and things like that. And our winter coats used to live in there but now it's summertime so they're living in the jeep and the bathroom has a nice light in here so it's nice and light but also uh, there is a four-way fan in here um, it gets dirty you have to clean it like almost weekly but it totally it's like an exhaust fan it totally takes every smell out um, it cools it off a lot if you're boondocking especially and you can't use air conditioning um, put it on level four and you'll cool right off all right, coming inside here. So we needed to have drawers. We got this um, at the container store. Uh, it's kind of like a build your own like dresser type of thing. Um, so my husband has two of the big drawers on the bottom and then I have the three on the top. And then we, on top of it actually, oh, there's a winter coat up there in here, but there's also our laundry supplies we just put on top of it. And to the left is a uh, grocery bags that we use for garbage bags. Now on this side, this is, um, let's just say that this is a mess, but we understand <laughs> where everything is because that's kind of just like how it happens in the RV. Um, on the left side is like all of our extra stuff. So there's extra soap, deodorant, whatever else we might need. The right, that's actually all of my like yoga pants <laughs> and my robe in there. I've got my hair dryer back there. We've got our two dop kits in here. Um, down below, this is kind of our medicine chest or I guess health kit. And then we also just have like extra things in here too. There's lotion. Um, I think there's like our extra shampoos there, our Vaseline, you know, just random stuff. Again, it's kind of like we know where everything is and it works for us. Um, I always keep saying that I'm going to organize this better and it just never happens. So I don't know. It's worked out just fine. Oh, and up here too, that's my laptop bag. We have like three laptops in there. Um, but that just is a nice little place to store it when we don't need it. Down below in here is where the hot water heater is if you need to get to it, especially if you're gonna dewinterize or winterize, it's behind these panels. All right, coming back into our kitchen slash dinette area, um, we added a clock in here. I've had people tell us that we shouldn't have a clock because we're camping and I'm like, oh, we live in here and I need to know what time it is. And I love that there's a clock there and I can see what time it is. So next to our clock here, that's where the Furion radio is. Uh, it is Bluetooth enabled. You can put HDMI in it. Um, we use the USB to power our uh, fire stick for our TV. And the inside and outside speakers are controlled through here as well. And there is a remote for this, although Truth be told, um, we like never use it because you have to be pretty close to it to make it work. The TV here is a 12 volt TV, so it works when you are boondocking. And if you are in desperate need of a 12 volt plug, like to plug in your laptop when you're boondocking, you can also use that. Um, there are a few cords we have kind of done our best as we could to tuck them up into here to make them not be so seen, but sometimes they are just out. In the back there where there's a red light, that's where the cable gets plugged in or the antenna. So if you're plugged into the side with the red light, that is controlling your antenna. That's like your input from the antenna. If you are plugged into the other one, that is your cable input. Um, if you're not using your antenna, you should turn it off because it does waste battery. 
above the dinette there are three cabinets right here again bungee cords because we keep them closed all right so again this is one of those like chaotic messes that we know where everything is this is our dog's cabinet this is all of his stuff um his jacket his treats his toys whatever he gets his own cabinet which is kind of ridiculous and like one day i keep saying oh i'm gonna redo all this and it just never happens so this middle one's a little bit of a mess, but it's like our games and our craft stuff, like scissors and twine and our, you know, we have stamps and postcards and thank you cards in there. And then this one's kind of more of our electronic one. Um, this one up here is like our catch-all, but it's like stuff we're always using. For example, our thermocells are in there for mosquitoes or our tape measures in there. And again, it's like chaos, but we know where everything is, so it seems to work. And this is kind of more of our electronics down here. We have little bags for all of them for like the cameras and stuff. So again, controlled chaos. All right, so this is another emergency window right by the dinette. And this dinette can turn into a bed, a, like a twin size bed. Um, I'll do that kind of like, you know, the power of magical TV stuff. Um, underneath, that's where I keep the yoga mat on the wheel well there. And then Frankie gets another little bed. So he sleeps under there a lot too when he's not sleeping right there. Um, we tend to put these balsa blankets on the dinette just because it's not sticky on you. Then the dinette too, um, it, this is like how the table is supposed to be, I think. It's not completely centered. So if you were to flip it around, which I'll do in a sec, then it kind of sticks out into the hallway and then you, it like gives you an extra like three inches against the wall. I've seen people think that like they have a huge gap and I'm like oh just turn your table around and then they do and they're like oh I get it now so this is what I mean it's kind of turned around here and you can see there is a gap along the wall and it's further into the hallway um, we do not prefer it this way these two lights over the dinette are actually not part of the whole interior light so they'll stay on so you have to just be careful remember to turn them off and then same thing with the light over the kitchen sink. It's the same way. So this is the big dinette here, like I was saying. And then I'll come back to it and put it down and also go into the what's underneath the benches. But first, so this is like command central. It's where you can turn the lights on and off outside. So the porch light, the awning light, you can extend the awning, the interior lights here. And then we also put little hooks underneath for our keys, uh, flashlight and masks. All right, now that I've kicked Frankie off of the dinette, um, this is where we keep a lot of our food. And we used to keep it in the pantry before, but you know, it, it sank in the pantry. Uh, couldn't handle it. So this is a little messy, um, you know, 10 months in, and we, if you don't go in and clean it out like every couple weeks, it just gets like this. But we have our alcohol bottles in here. We used the actual closet divider as a alcohol bottle <laughs> divider. We also have like olive oil, things like that. We have these, um, our meat got delivered in this, in these like nice insulated bags. So we use those when we're traveling to put bottles in. And then we kind of have no organization right now whatsoever. Um, that's what happens after 10 months, I guess. But I will be organizing this soon <laughs> and getting rid of a lot of things that we, don't, we haven't eaten or like just organizing it better. But this is just kind of our food bench at this point. So this side of the dinette often also becomes our sweatshirt holder. Um, it just kind of happens because it's right there and our blanket holder. <laughs> um, but you know, it's a place to put things. And sometimes we do hide our sweatshirts in the Jeep as well if we don't need them like in the actual RV. So this side of the dinette has like our extra sheets, um, some extra towels. Apparently there's some forks in there. Um, a bunch of soap and we have these nice shoe boxes that fit in the this side is a little smaller due to that um, area where we have our shoes in front and there's a little bit of the wheel well that gets in over here but these shoe boxes fit just great in that corner and then underneath here I think we also have like our go bags which is probably not the best spot for them and then extra stuff for our dog Coming back here, the 192 has this net, and originally it was for the dog bowls, which are on the floor here. But we use it for um, 
it depends. <laughs> For a while it was our dog's leash and then it was our dog bowls and sometimes it's flip-flops. So right now it's flip-flops, but it depends on which time of year. And then Frankie's bowl, well, I'll go back to his bowl here, I guess. So Frankie's bowl is usually on the floor here. Um, we definitely spill his water all the time and kick it. We used to keep it in the bathroom, but then he stopped liking to go in there for some reason for it, whatever, he's special. But um, yeah, so that's where we keep it. And then his bed is here in the corner and he loves actually sleeping. Well, all of his toys are in it right now. He'll take them all out, but he likes sleeping kind of like underneath the bed and underneath this little curtain to give himself a hidden space. So he's a big fan of that. So the door here, we ended up putting this insulation on it um, for two reasons. One, we did it in the winter to stay warm. But then the other thing is like, you can kind of see us through the door of the 2020. I know the 2021 model is a little different, but I don't know. We just left it on. We kind of like it there. Above our door, this is our magnet holder. So we try to pick up a magnet everywhere we go. It's not always possible, but I found these little metal um, thin, I guess they're actually whiteboards that I was able to put on with Velcro strips and it, they've held really well and none of the magnets have fallen off even when we've been driving over crazy bumps. We also added a rug here. Um, this is a very in, inexpensive, I think it was like $25, $27, something like that, Amazon rug, but it fits really well and also just really warmed it up when we were here during the winter. To start with our electric jack here, um, it's great to have an electric jack, but there's also a light here. You can't see it obviously because it's light right now, but it's nice at night to um, have that if you're moving the jack up and down or also if like you're boondocking in the middle of nowhere and uh, you wanna make sure that you don't trip over the tongue, that's a good light to have as well. Now we have our propane holder here and we've also got, this is our um, Prodigy, the trailer brakes. And so that just connects into our like seven pin there and then um, plugs in, there's a lot of spider webs there, <laughs> but it, it plugs in and it kind of um, makes sure that we have good trailer brakes on it, which I know in some states is required and um, we definitely have used them, especially in going down hills in the mountains. We have two batteries and we had an extra one added so we could go longer, um, you know, for boondocking. And you can also, um, you can get solar, obviously. We don't have a solar package, but it would help the batteries stay uh, charged and you could stay out like probably for, I don't know, weeks. I don't know how long, but we can go about seven days with our two batteries as long as we're conserving power on the inside. And this knob here is actually our, um, it's where our sway bar, we have a re-sway bar, our anti-sway bar, I guess, because it's helping you not sway. Um, that's where it connects onto our tongue. And this blue cap is where the gas for our outdoor grill goes and it connects right into our propane. So I'm actually gonna just pop the hose in real quick. You just pop it in and then make sure that this is um, flush. So that means that the gas is on, but I'm actually gonna wait to turn that on because I wanna plug it in to the actual grill. So the 2020 192s have an outdoor grill that is a gas grill and we have a sprayer hose right here too. So the hose I've already connected, but it just goes right there. We actually got a different nozzle. Um, our nozzle broke, but we've got water now. So inside our underpass is where our grill is. All right, so I'll lift this up. I love that this is magnetized by the way. And this is what it looks like when it's pushed in. It does have this latch, so when you're driving, um, it doesn't move. So pulling the grill out, uh, we've got a little sink area. This kind of ends up being our food prep station, but you could use it if you put water in it or whatnot to wash things. And this is our grill. It is definitely used. We've been in here for 10 months. We use this almost every day. Okay, opening the grill, we've got two burners and two knobs. We have melted these knobs too with um, hot pan handles. The grill has these two wings, so it had to do one-handed. So you actually want to use it this way because it helps block the wind. So now I'll plug the hose in. 
So putting the hose on is very similar to what we just did on the other side. So you pull this black part back, you pop it on, and then push this black part up so it's secure. And then you would just close, or I guess open the valve so that the gas is flowing. And then you also have to open the valve on the other part on the tongue to make sure that the gas is coming to the grill. All right, I'm gonna keep going. So we have our awning only partially way out. It's a little windy. Um, our awning on the 2020 is white underneath and then this like gray on top. We also have lights at the end of our awning. So if it's open all the way, we have a strip of LED lights. Um, what's kind of interesting about it is it's not next to the RV, so bugs don't get attracted, but you can't have it open if it's windy. So if you're cooking outside, you need like a headlamp or something like that if it's nighttime. Um, side note about gravity chairs, these things have been a pain. I feel like we're just carting them around and I would not get them again. Just a random side note here on this tour. Just to the left of the stairs is a leash latch so you can tether your dog's leash to it. All right, so we've got these outdoor speakers up here. They are controlled inside um, at the Furion uh, faceplate. This orange light is our porch light. Um, it's dim enough where you can kind of keep it on all night and it won't bother people, but bright enough so you can see what you're doing. This is outside electricity and it is controlled by the GFCI inside. So if your GFCI blows, um, if you have too much power into this, it will blow your GFCI. This is our black tank flush. Um, currently we have a hose in it because we're about to flush our tank, but this is where you connect it. Drop down to these stabilizers here. We have four stabilizers. Um, they are manual, but they only take a couple seconds to install. And you know, you don't want to level your RV with your stabilizers, they're just for stabilizing. These are not our original bumper end caps. We actually lost both of ours, or maybe they were stolen, I have no clue, but we just bought new ones on Amazon. They were only a couple bucks. Inside the bumper is where we store our sewer hose. On the back side here, this is where our access is to the hot water. Well, to the switch anyway and there's a reset button in here. See that switch right there that's that off and on? Um, if you want it to be on propane, you would turn it off. And if you want it on electric, you turn it on. And then when we're storing our RV, we keep it in the off position. This is also where you would like light your pilot light or whatnot. We've got our state sticker of all the places we've been. Um, this is our back window, obviously, and above it we have a Furion camera. It's the 500 or 5000 or something like that. It's a 5-inch one, but um, super helpful when backing up, but also just when driving. R192 came with a ladder, so we can go onto the roof. Um, I'm not going to do that right now, but you can have access to everything. It's also the way we clean the screen on the fan. Um, our antenna is up there too, so every now and then we'll have to move the antenna to different directions. Uh, so your 192 probably doesn't have two um, pipes. Ours does. I do not know how this happened. Most of them have one with the black and the gray, and then you can choose which one's going to be open at the same time. We have two. Super weird. Coming in a little closer, so that's how you drain your tanks right there with like if you're winterizing you can get all the extra water out on this side here um, we have our black tank is closest our gray tank is a little further our black is closed right now gray is open but uh yeah we have two kind of weird all right this is our electric um, we have 30 amp cable and satellite input this is the um, exhaust for the furnace also, if, that, if it's raining really heavily, um, water will get inside. So if it's like pouring sideways rain, we've actually just covered this up by um, putting like magnets over it, which is not healthy to do long term, but it, we had to do it in a pinch. All right, not going to open this because I don't have a screwdriver right now, but essentially this is how you um, get into the back of the fridge. 
That is the vent from the kitchen fan and it has a little lever so you can open and close it. Um, we obviously keep it open when we're using it, but for the most part we do keep it closed because um, we don't want bugs or things coming in. So I don't know why newer R-Pods don't have the outdoor shower, but R2020 does and we love it. Especially when it comes to like washing our dog or when we are at the beach just washing the sand off of us, it comes in really handy. One thing though, I don't understand why they locked it it's with this like crappy, just generic RV key. So I'm gonna unlock it. Other way. All right, oh, there's a spider in there. Um, we have our hot and cold and then a shower wand that probably is about five feet long. Continuing over, this is our city water connection, which is connected right now. Above it is the fresh water connection. Then next to it is our other uh, pass-through. Now these do lock, but I mean, it's kind of a crappy little RV lock. Anyone could get into it. Opening it, and again, that magnet is so key. We have a lot of stuff in here. I'm not even gonna go into it. We've got like four chairs, a table that folds, like all of our RV stuff, all of our, um, our blocks, our extra hoses, our whatever. We keep everything in here. We do not keep our hose, uh, our water hose or our electric um, cord in here. We do keep those in the back of the Jeep, but like everything else we have is in here. So another thing I'll point out here, on all four sides, we have these little air conditioning, um, it's like a gutter, I guess. So the air conditioning uh, condensation will come off either the front or the back. Uh, usually it depends on how your RV is leveled. and. Um, sometimes it leaves a big mess, so we have a bucket that we put under it if we're in places where we don't want it to be wet. All right, we're coming back around to the front, so I'm still going to do the awning and then also show you the dry weight. Inside the door is where it shows the dry weight. Ours is 33.98. So last, I'm going to extend the awning, but only for a second because it's pretty windy, but I'll show you where the LED strips are. When you open the awning, you want to open it all the way till you see that Dometic sticker. And then there is a line of LED lights out here. The awning also can be adjusted. So if it's raining, you can pull down one of the sides to get some of the water off. You do that over here by just adjusting the arm. And lastly, this is our door handle and stairs. Um, I loathe these stairs. They bounce, they make noise, um, whatever. But you can replace them or you can get a stabilizer. We have done neither of those things. And this arm does adjust. It can go back this way. Or when we're driving, for example, we put it this way. Um, one time my husband forgot I was in here and put it this way as we were getting ready to leave and I couldn't get out and that was a little freaky. But um, this is generally the way that we leave it while we're not in it. Um, and when we're driving down the road and it kind of helps us mentally remember that the door is shut and locked. I guess it's just one of those checklist things. So this is our R Pod 192. It's a 2020 192, a little different than the newer models, um, but we love it and it's been our home for the last 10 months. So coming back inside here. So if you have any questions about the 2020 RPOD 192, uh, please leave a comment below. I'll be happy to answer. And if there are any um, questions about RVing too, just <laughs> living in a small RV for 10 months or like how to flush the tanks or whatever, just ask any question. I'm like happy to answer. It's been a really crazy adventure and I would love to share any crazy or interesting or weird things I've learned along the way. Thanks for watching.